This is The Extra Point, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast, sponsored by your Phoenix Suns. All right, well, welcome to this on-location edition of The Extra Point podcast. Mark McLuhan and Nick King here from Mullet Arena. And this is a wild scene here, Nick, the final Arizona Coyotes home game that, that we know of for the foreseeable future. Yeah, a lot of emotion, a lot of it's sadness, heartbreak. It's been interesting to me as we're getting ready for the puck to drop to see a lot of signs from fans about we will miss you, we will always love you. I don't know if that's going to be the sentiment from everyone, but I think certainly right now people feel like um, they are going to miss them and they are going to love them at least for, for a little while longer, probably when they're really good playing in Salt Lake City. Which, which is the sad part because this is a team that seems to be on the ascent and right as things are going great, they're leaving town, which seems in my estimation be a very Arizona sports story. Yeah, the thing that's not an Arizona story, maybe sports or otherwise, is I just think of this state as growth. Uh, Always getting bigger. One of the fastest growing markets in the country. And teams have only ever come here. They don't leave. They're leaving now. It's weird. It is weird. It's going to be a wild night. And earlier today, out on the patio in the heat, before we got inside (laughs) of the ice, we had a chance to talk to longtime Coyotes reporter Craig Morgan from PHNX. Now, we did have some audio difficulties, but we plowed through it. We're putting it here on the podcast page because he is such a respected voice to talk about what's the next step for hockey here in Arizona and where Coyotes and where the Coyotes and Coyote fans go from here. Special edition of the Extra Point, a conversation with one of the most respected writers here in the Valley of the Sun, especially when it comes to covering the Arizona Coyotes. Craig Morgan, what are kind of the thoughts rolling through your head as we get ready to watch them play their final game? I'm just, I've been getting texts and phone calls all day from former Coyotes players, executives, coaches, and I I woke up this morning thinking, I'm not going to get emotional about this. By the time I got to the arena, I was pretty emotional. Craig, generally the texts and calls you're getting from former players and executives, what are their emotions? Oh, it's all over the map. It's, it's disbelief, it's anger, it's you know, well wishes to the, the people around the team, well wishes to the staff. They're, listen, there are a lot of people that are gonna lose their jobs now. There's so many people impacted by this, but it's just, you know, all these people were part of this family and in spite of all the struggles of this team on the ice, you know, one season where they actually did anything in the playoffs, a lot of people care about being Coyotes. They identify with this organization, and it means something to them. There are a lot of people that put their blood, sweat, and tears into this franchise. So to see it move away, it's just a gut punch to so many people. Where do we where do we put the blame? Is this squarely on ownership here? Mostly on ownership, I would say. Um, and it's been, Mark, you've been around. It's been a string of ownership mistakes going all the way back to Steve Ellman's decision to move the team west to Glendale. That was the original sin for this franchise, and then it's just been a series of missteps with different ownership groups. But I will not absolve the league of guilt in this either because who vetted all those ownership groups? Who foisted all those people upon the Valley of the Sun and said, this is your savior, and when it turned out, they were anything but the savior. So there's blame to, to roll around here, but I would say the vast majority of this is on ownership groups, most notably the Morello ownership group. If a lot of it is on the Morello ownership, this idea that there's the five-year window to bring an expansion team back to Arizona, does it make sense? Why would the NHL trust them to bring it back? I think that gives you a hint as to the legal predicament the league was in, right? In order to extricate themselves from this situation here at Mullet Arena, which has, has become an embarrassment around the league, they had to make concessions to Alex Morello. This was the only way they were going to get out. He gets to keep the Roadrunners, and he's trying to move them here. He gets that five-year window uh, first right of refusal for an expansion franchise. I think if you did a poll around the Valley right now, I don't know if Alex Morello would reach 10% of the public that would want him as the next owner, but that's the situation we're in. We'll see if he can actually close the deal, acquire the land and build the arena and actually keep that right to have an expansion franchise. Here's what I think will be the biggest holdup in this. Is the city of Phoenix really going to want two arenas competing with each other? What, what do you think? What do, what do you think the answer is? I, that's a good question because Kate Gallego isn't saying much on the process. Um, so a lot to happen. Your belief that at some point in the future there is NHL hockey in Arizona is at what level? I think there will be NHL hockey in Arizona again, but that five-year window that the league is floating, I think that's the best-case scenario, and as we've discovered with the Arizona Coyotes, it never plays out according to the best-case scenario. 
Well, it's such a bummer. Is it insane to think that the that idea of the Roadrunners playing here, like that people are going to want to support? People love hockey. There are yeah. a lot of people here that love hockey, but that they're going to want to support the players that are then going to go play in Salt Lake City for a team that might be, again, really good in a couple of years. Yeah, it's hard to gauge right now because the, I think the emotions are so raw that people are just saying there's no way we're going to support anything the Morellos do. We'll see. If the Roadrunners get here and they're an intriguing team, maybe some some people will come out. The question is, will they even be playing here? Because there are, there are so many hurdles to cross before they can even play in this arena contractually with Tucson and with ASU. All right, we'll leave, you, leave us with this because we're making you stand here in 95. <laughs> because you, know, you guys are the ones wearing suits. <laughs> well, well, we appreciate your time, and we appreciate all you've done for Arizona sports and all the reporting you've done. So, so for you, where do you go from here, and what is, uh, what, what's the nickname of the, uh, of the, the Salt Lake City team in your opinion? <laughs> Uh, we were having a name the uh, Salt Lake City team the other day, and I, I came up with Flamingos because it, it makes as much sense as jazz in Utah, yes. so they should go with Flamingos. Yeah. Um, as far as where I'm going, nice job here, McClune, trying to break news on this show. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. all I'll say is be announced. All right. Well, well thanks for you know all you've done here and, and, and just always offering your perspective to us here in Arizona's family. You do a great job, PHNX. One more thing, where can we hear you tonight as you wrap this thing up? Where can you hear me? On yes. gophnx.com on the PHNX Coyotes podcast. I'll be sitting alongside Leah Merrill and Steve Peters. I don't know how long we'll be there, and I don't, I don't know how many tears we'll shed along the way, but we will be there as always post game. We look forward to seeing you in the suit. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Awesome. This is the Extra Point, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast, sponsored by your Phoenix Suns.